grade 11s. In this video, we will revise the stem and leaf plot, scatter plots, as well as calculating the mean, mode, median, range, quartiles, and interquartile range. All these concepts were taught in previous grades. Let's begin with the stem and leaf plot. This method is used to organize statistical data. The greatest commonplace value of the data is used to form the stem. The next greatest commonplace value is used to form the leaves. Let's do an example to remind ourselves how to do this. Put the data into a stem and leaf plot. 65, 80, 73, 91, 95, 82, 78, 69, 86 and 88. First we draw the stem and fill in the values for the stem. Remember that this 6, 7, 8 and 9 represent 60, 70, 80 and 90. The first number is 65, so we put a 5 in the 60 row. We'll also cross out 65, so that we remember that we've plotted it. The second number is 80, so we put a 0 in the 80 row and cross out 80. Next, we have 73 and 91 and 95, 82, 78, 69, 86, and our last number is 88. The stem and leaf plot has made it easier to order the data. We can now see that the data ranges from 65 to 95. These plots are very useful if we need to find the quartiles and interquartile range. But before we revise that, let's take a moment to look at scatter plots. A scatter plot is used to show the relationship between two sets of data. Points are plotted onto a graph and a line of best fit is drawn through them. Data could follow a linear, quadratic or exponential trend. The strength of a relationship between two variables in a scatter plot depends on how close the data are to the line of best fit. The closer the points are to the line, the stronger the relationship. If the points are further away from the line of best fit, the weaker the relationship. If the line of best fit slopes up to the right and has a positive gradient, then the linear relationship is positive. If the line of best fit slopes down to the right and has a negative gradient, then the linear relationship is negative. Now let's revise the mean, mode, median, range, quartiles and interquartile range. The mean is also known as the average. The mode is the most commonly occurring observation. The median is the middle most observation. The range is the highest observation minus the lowest. Quartiles are the measures of dispersion around the median. Remember, there are three quartiles. The lower quartile, or Q1, this is the median of the lower half of the values. The median, or Q2, the value that divides the data into two halves. The upper quartile, or Q3, this is the median of the upper half of the values. These quartiles represent three boundary values that divide the data into four parts. Remember that before we find the quartiles, we need to arrange the data in ascending order. Let's look at an example and see if you can remember just how to calculate these. The following set of 12 marks was obtained for a class out of 100. 18, 32, 43, 54, 55, 61, 73, 78, 89, 90, 91 and 99. This data has already been arranged in ascending order. We're going to start by finding the median or Q2 value. We cross off the first and last numbers, then the second and second last numbers, and carry on crossing out until we get to the middle. This middle is the median. In this set of data, the median is between two numbers, namely 61 and 73. Therefore, the median will be equal to 61 plus 73 divided by 2, which is equal to 67. We find the lower and upper quartiles using the same method. We cross out the numbers between the beginning and Q2 until we find the middle. This is where Q1 is. The lower quartile is the median of the lower half of the data. 
which is equal to 48,5. The upper quartile is equal to the median of the upper half of the data. The upper quartile, Q3, is equal to 89 plus 90 divided by 2, which is equal to 89,5. Now that we have the quartiles, we can calculate the interquartile range. The interquartile range, or IQR, is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. 89,5 minus 48,5, which is equal to 41. The semi-interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile divided by 2. So 89,5 minus 48,5 divided by 2, which is equal to 20,5. Let's take the last few moments to revise finding the mean and the range. We'll use the same set of data as the previous example. To find the mean or average, we add up all the values and divide by the number of pieces of data. 18 plus 32 plus 43 plus 54 plus 55 plus 61 plus 73 plus 78 plus 89 plus 90 plus 91 plus 99 all divided by 12. The mean is equal to 65,25. The range is equal to 99 minus 18, which is equal to 81. There is no mode as each result only occurs once. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by trying to do the questions on working with statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn more about statistics on our website, www.mindset.com. .co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.